Why do you think, Rochelle, that in, in this context of very personal relationships, we are, or often, people get stuck in the same conflict? And we, I hear it everywhere, like, oh, we're having the same conflict again, and we don't... Mm -hmm don't succeed to get out of it or to find a solution or to can you speak to them welcome to nvc life i'm rochelle lamb veteran nvc trainer and relationship coach helping listeners navigate interpersonal conflict and ground more deeply into relational living Greetings, fellow humans. A few days ago, I had the great pleasure of speaking with Sophie DeWolf, who is the Outreach and Programs Coordinator for NVC Academy. The NVC Academy offers hundreds of affordable online personal growth courses and resources to learn nonviolent communication from home. And they have invited me to present an online course in February and March of 2024, titled Bridging Differences? Building Bonds, A Revolutionary Approach to Resolving Conflict. My conversation with Sophie was recorded for the purpose of letting people know about me and my history with nonviolent communication. I enjoyed our conversation so much that I thought I would share it here on my podcast. I've edited our conversation into two episodes. Here is part one of our conversation. Rochelle, your course is about how... NVC is a revolutionary approach to resolving conflicts. And I am curious to know, how has it been revolutionary for you personally? Oh, for me personally. Okay, well, I met Marshall over 20 years ago, Marshall Rosenberg. Mm -hmm. And when I met him, I was already in my 40s. I had two children at home. And I, like anybody else, would struggle with how do you manage your relationships, especially when you've got kids who have their own ideas about what they want to do. I want to stay up till midnight or I don't want to brush my teeth. Uh, no, I don't want to eat that, whatever it is. And then there's the spouse as well. When I heard about nonviolent communication and I went to see Marshall Rosenberg, who at the time had a very heavy work schedule. And the only place in Canada that he was teaching was Victoria, BC, which is where I live. And so I was so excited to be able to hear him speak because after I read the book, Nonviolent Communication, I was so profoundly impacted. And so I went to the workshop, got in there early, sat in the front row. I was wondering, who is this man who's going to speak? When I came home at the end of the first day, and it was a two-day workshop, my husband said to me, so how, how was the workshop? And I smiled. I said, it was so, so good. So, so good. And then I burst into tears, which caught me by surprise. And the reason was because it had affected me so profoundly. It felt like, oh my goodness, I finally found it. I found something I'd been looking for. It doesn't mean my life got <laughs> immediately better but i it made so much sense to me and to see it in action and to to hear what marshall had to say and i'll say the first thing he said at that event after he was introduced by one of the local organizers the first thing he said was so what can i do today to make life more wonderful for you and already that was such a simple question, but I could just feel it coming from him energetically that he was sincerely wanting to help us, I just wanted to hear. And so people would put up their hands, you know, I want to learn how to connect with my husband who never listens to me or my child who never listens to me, that, that kind of thing. So it's a long answer to your question, but for me, already well into my 40s, I'd never heard anything like that before, ever. My father was a social worker, and he counseled people. And my mother was extraordinarily loving and kind. Still, I'd never heard anything like that before. And yet, it's very much common sense. <laughs> so 
maybe common sense is revolutionary these days. And do you remember in the first months or, or years that you know nonviolent communication? Do you have some like memories of how did you speak different? How did you connect or approach people different? Um, like in this first period, what was what did you do different, or or how did nonviolent communication helped you? Yeah, one thing I can say is that. After that workshop, the world looked different to me. I, I can honestly say that. I saw everything differently. I saw the communication between people differently. I mean, Marshall simply says that, you know, all people are ever doing is saying please and thank you. Please is an opportunity to enrich life and thank you is an expression of uh, gratitude. Yeah. So I started to see it that way. And because the feelings and needs are so core to understanding what's alive in people, that too, I, I, I had a mantra going on in my head, feelings and needs, feelings and needs, which may sound small, but for me, it was a very big deal. I also understood feelings differently and needs differently. I mean, it's certainly language that's it's out there in, in public discourse. People talk about, oh, having your needs met. But the framing of it in the NVC process, to me, is is unique and very powerful. So, yeah, it made a difference. Even with a neighbor who I was having a problem with, there was an immediate shift in something. I thought I had a success story. You remember the details? The neighbor I had never met before, but I ended up meeting. And it was simply the fact that I, I came home one day and I live in a, a housing co-op. And there was a tree that was being trimmed. A lot of trimming was happening. It was not on my property, but it was on the property next door. And the tree was very beautiful. And what it does is it blocks a view of a highway. So I prefer to see the tree over the highway. So there were two gentlemen who were trimming the tree. And I interrupted. I waved at them. I said, hey, what are you guys doing? Well, the owner has told us we need to cut down this tree or at least trim it back. And I said, oh, is it possible for me to speak with the landlord? It's Friday afternoon. It's a warm day. They look at each other. They don't want to continue the job anyway. So they're happy to say, sure, uh, we'll give you his business card. Give him a call. When we eventually spoke, the man who I spoke to was so angry. He was livid. What are you doing speaking to my workers I pay them good money. You have no business interfering. I didn't get the job done. So at this point, I'm holding the phone out here. This was when some of us had landlines <laughs> still. So back in the day of a landline, if anybody doesn't remember what that is, it's a phone that's plugged into the wall and you can only walk about five feet away from it. So in any event, I'm holding the receiver out very far because the guy is just screaming at me. And here's what happened. I remembered, oh, what's going on for him? I'm going to empathize with this man. So I said, do you have a need for respect? You angry because you have a need for respect for how you use your resources? I mean, it was, it was early stages and I was just kind of fumbling through it. But I did get it. And he just continued screaming. It's not like that appeased him. It didn't. But it didn't get worse. Put it that way. It just kind of stabilized the conversation. So yeah, you really have a need to be seen and heard and that you own the building. So it's up to you to say what happens to the trees. And he hung up. Not the end of the story. What happened next was it was a Friday night and I thought, oh, I should call him back and share with him what's alive in me. Because I was, I was reflecting back what was alive in him, but not sharing what was alive in me. So I waited a couple of hours because I didn't want to speak to him. I wanted to leave a message. So I called back. I left a message and I simply said, listen, I understand that you have a need for respect about your own property. What I didn't tell you was the reason why I had asked them not to. It's because that's a really beautiful tree and it's a much nicer view than the highway. 
And that's really what it was all about. And I just wanted to let you know that. And you mentioned that you had planted the tree. I'm glad you did. And I just needed to say that. So that was a Friday night. So fast forward to Monday, somebody comes and knocks on my door. And it's the owner who I had never met. And he extends his hand to shake my hand. And he says, I'm the person who owns the building next door to you. I'm Mr. So-and-so. And I wanted to ask you, uh, or just check with you because this is how much I'm going to trim. I just want to see if you're okay with that. Mm. That's a pretty major success story, in my opinion. I thought that was pretty sweet. So I was on a high. I was like, yeah, this stuff really works. Yeah. Um, and the thing was, it gave me a language to express some sincerity. I mean, that's really what the scenario was. And I could understand why he was angry. That's useful, in my opinion. A lot of times we don't really understand, at least not in a fulsome way, what's going on for another person. We can see them raging, but to really get it. And NVC helps people to get it. It certainly helped me to get it. So I, I was really, hooked. Yeah, I really <laughs> like the story. And, and sometimes I think it's so easy in some situations, like just recognize, okay, I have heard you. And, and guessing what's going on in the other person inside. Yeah. Although, like in your story, they keep on saying, yeah, but, or they defend themselves. And then mm -hmm. some days after, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I will also say what I remember Marshall saying. He would say, you know, a lot of times this is easier to do with strangers than it is with the people who live with you or who you're married to or your children. And I, I would say that is the case. And the reason that is the case is because we establish patterns in our ways of relating and to, to correct or change course of a pattern. Oftentimes we're met with resistance and it's good to be alert to that and then know how to, so how do I approach this in a different way then? So that the other person doesn't think they're being manipulated because this is often one of the objections that people have. Why are you talking to me like that? It's so weird. And we, so you empathize with that. Yeah, you're not trusting in my sincerity. And I, and I would do the same if I were in your shoes. But let me tell you why I'm doing this. Because I don't like our pattern. I don't think you like it either. So I'm wanting to do this so that we can improve our communication in our relationship. I care about you. I care about this relationship. That's why I'm trying this out. Does that impact you in any way? How does that land for you? So you ask the person. Why do you think, Rochelle, that in, in this context of very personal relationships, we are, or often, people get stuck in the same conflict? And we, I hear it everywhere, like, oh, we're having the same conflict again, and we don't, mm -hmm. we don't succeed to get out of it or to find a solution or to... Can you speak to that? We're creatures of habit. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. I don't want to get into psychology, but I'm going to right now which is we, we do speak about attachment styles and where do we develop those attachment styles in early childhood. So a lot of the repeat patterns are things that people are trying to resolve that they took on in their childhood. It's not surprising then, then whatever real challenges that we might have had with a parent or a caregiver, somebody very close to us, if they're not metabolized, they're seeking some kind of resolution. Where are they going to try to resolve in another intimate relationship? So that's where you see the pattern coming up of, boy, when you, when you say what you just said, you remind me of a parent, like I have a sense of not having any agency or respect for my own choices. It's like a pattern in one person and a pattern in another, and they kind of, it's a beautiful fit. And then it creates a lot of sorrow for people. But why NVC is so useful because it helps people understand, like, let's talk about those needs, the need for respect for personal choices. And also, what does it mean to be in a relationship? Because connection and mutual regard, mutual respect, these are going to be important. But sometimes it's not so easy to bring these things together. So we want to try to create some kind of cohesiveness. And by the way, too, it's important to recognize that if you're in a relationship, there will be conflict. 
if you don't have conflict, you're not in a relationship. So let's not try to get rid of conflict, but improve our capacity to be in those places of tension. I think that's very important. I'm not trying to get rid of conflict. I'm trying to help you understand it and get through it. To strengthen the relationship, people oftentimes, if it's done well, they come out of it with changed minds. Their appreciation for the other person, for conflict, for life is larger. It's enhanced. So you could say conflict, the great enhancer. That's a good workshop title. (laughs) Yeah, and more connected. Yeah. When you get out from a conflict and you you both are understood and heard Mm -hmm. and there is like a a mutual understanding. Yeah, you're in my case, I feel always like more connected. (sighs) (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's it for now. Thank you for listening to part one of my conversation with Sophie DeWolf at NBC Academy. Tune in next week to hear part two. And if you're interested in my upcoming course at the Academy that starts in February 2024, I've included a link to the course in the show notes. Thank you for tuning into NBC Life. For future episodes, be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or YouTube. For free resources or to book a private session with me, head over to rochellelam.com. Until the next time, stay sane, grateful, and generous.